many Zimbabweans have moved to the urban areas where space is now limited, yet being food secure is one of the pillars that the country is pushing under National Development Strategy 1. We travel to Vainona, a 10-minute drive from the CBD, to see how the future of urban farming in Zimbabwe is building momentum. Vaito Grau is home to hydroponic farming on 600 square meters of land. On this episode of Industrial Watch, Join host Rumbizai Mashahanya as she explores food manufacturing, guided by the co-founder of Vital Grow Urban Farmer, Keith Chipundla. One of the most interesting concepts of our time is to use pure water to grow plants, and it's called hydroponic farming. We're here in the heart of Vainona, where we're about to see what Vital Grow does to ensure that you get the best things served on your plate. Join me. As promised, we are here at Vita Growth and we're about to have a conversation with the brains behind this project. Keith, welcome to Industry Watch. Hi, Rumi. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's an honor. It's a beautiful place where we have just, uh, you, you just took me through briefly, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe before we get to talk about the plants, let's talk about Keith. Who is Keith? Keith is the father of two. Uh, married and an entrepreneur and a farmer. Mm -hmm. uh, so over here at Vitagrow, I'm the co-founder and I'm the head of operations and I'm the one in charge of day-to-day -day operations. How I got into hydroponics is actually a funny story. Uh, it's, it has to go back about five years before. So initially I did my university in China and I did a degree in uh, finance and then which has nothing to do with agriculture finance. yeah 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 but then okay. uh, when I finished uh, <clears throat> in 2016 I taught English in China for a few years and then okay. I kind of got uh, disillusioned with that a bit and then I decided to come back home to Zimbabwe and then uh, you know try something back home because you know home is always home so when I got back I realized that uh, you know, opportunities for my sector, because there were so many people who had the same sort of degree, the same sort of uh, qualifications. Mm -hmm. So yes. opportunities were a bit uh, far and uh, wide, right? So what I did was I decided, okay, fine, let me start something, just anything on the side, right? To just, uh, you know, keep me going while I wait for my CVs to be <laughs> replied, uh, my thousand CVs that I submitted. Uh, then I tried a few projects, all that, all that. It didn't really work because I had a little bit of savings from when I was working in China. Mm -hmm. And then someone just, uh, I came across greenhouse farming by chance, really. And then I had a little bit of money left, so I decided, look, instead of using it all, let me just try this project and then see, sort of as a backup, you know, let me just have something running. You know, in Zimbabwe, everyone's always doing a project here and there, you know. So I was still living at home uh, with my parents in Westgate. So I spoke to my mom and I said, look, mom, uh, we had quite a big space in our backyard. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're not using it. Can I please just put one greenhouse there, you know, just to do something in it? And then luckily she said it's okay. And then I put up one greenhouse there. So then I started farming, but I was doing uh, soil farming. I was okay. doing cucumbers and lettuce, but in the soil, okay. right? Then after a year, uh, I came across uh, hydroponics uh, by chance, really, online. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of fell in love with it, uh, with it because uh, for a person uh, who was always an urban dweller, I, uh, I wasn't really used to all the dirt, you know, yes. of rural farming. Yes. So I really liked hydroponics in that it, uh, it gave a solution, an urban-based solution that you can actually do anywhere. And basically, yeah, I like the cleanliness about it. <laughs> and I also <laughs> had, a, I always had an interest in sustainable agriculture. So for me, this was something that I thought, look, it was still a backup plan, but I was like, look, this would be a good backup plan for me. And then from then on, I just sort of fell more and more in love with hydroponics. And then uh, I met up with my two partners uh, who became my co-founders uh, co uh, from the UK. And then in 2019, we formally, uh, <coughs> we formally registered Vitagrow as a company. And then from then on, we started working to change all our operations to be fully hydroponic for everything that we grow. And then we've just been growing from then and then and forming partnerships on the way to where we are right now. Right. So one of the things that happens when it comes to agriculture industry is a lot of the people who are in that industry have gone to school or started towards mm. getting qualifications for that particular um, industry. Mm. 
for you it's been movement from banking and finance mm. to teaching English in China yeah. and now you're into hydroponics how has the transition been for you as an individual you're now you you have talked of three different industries mm -hmm. how has the transition been for you as an individual okay so I think I'd say it's been interesting to say the least right mm -hmm. uh, it's been a complete u-turn but uh, in life, you know, sometimes when you're young, you don't really know what your passion is, right? You're just going with the motion. So for me, I was always good at numbers and banking, you know, it's like, it would be a good fit. So I still do like banking and stuff, but there was just something about being your own boss that sort of, uh, you know, uh, caught my eye and caught my attention. When I was younger and going through everything, I didn't really know what it was, but I didn't really want to wake up, you know, any hours <laughs> and things like that, right? I wanted to sort of work, uh, you know, mm -hmm. according to my own pace mm -hmm. and my own mm -hmm. timelines, my own deadlines and mm -hmm. things like that. But I didn't really know. So the, what, what this uh, company did for me, uh, although I didn't know it back then, but was it, it made me realize exactly what I want in life, mm -hmm. right? Which is to, besides just being your own boss, but to actually create something that you see grow and then you begin to start employing people and changing people's lives, hopefully, and things like that, right? And watching something grow. So for me, the transition was, uh, was drastic, but it wasn't really so hard because I feel like I finally found what I was meant to do. So for me, I just slipped right into it and mm -hmm. it was good for me. The people were wondering, mm -hmm. what is hydroponics? Maybe if you could just break it down for us. Mm -hmm. When we are talking hydroponics, because hydro, the element I just picked up, mm -hmm. hydro is water. Is water, yes. But it's the ponic element that comes together. Okay. What is hydroponics? Okay, so hydroponics is, uh, is a method of farming, right? But it's a soilless method of farming. So with traditional farming, you have to take your plant, your seed, your seedling, and then you put it in the soil. And then you add fertilizers and things like that, right? And then your plant grows. So what happens there is the plant is taking the nutrition from the soil and the fertilizers that you add, right? Because the soil uh, has a lot of microorganisms and things happening in there, right? That are healthy towards the plants, right? But with hydroponics, we do not use any soil, right? All our, nutrient, uh, all our nutrients are administered to our crops through a nutrient-rich solution. So that's where the hydro comes in, the water, right? So we've got water, we add our nutrients in it, and then we... Uh, uh, we then take it through the roots, right, uh, as I'll show you through our systems. And then the roots, when they absorb the water, they also ab absorb the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that's what hydroponics is. And then I'll explain the benefits and, uh, you know, uh, challenges of hydroponics in the future. But uh, in a nutshell, that's really what we do. We farm without soil. Farming without soil, interesting indeed. And um, this concept, it's something that's new to the Zimbabwean farming industry why am i saying that because we are used to the traditional way of farming which is the soil but i just want to find out from you how popular is hydroponic farming mm, in the region uh, which is the african region as well as the international region how popular is hydroponics farming now okay so maybe i'll start with uh with zimbabwe first right for context so in zimbabwe it does seem like it's quite a new thing because it's only been over the last decade that really a lot of farmers have started actually looking at it as a viable way of farming. This can be traced back to, as you mentioned, uh, traditional farming has been there for generations. So I've seen that it's very hard for people sometimes to adopt to change and new methods, right? Uh, because there's a lot of misconception about what exactly hydroponics is, right? So in Zimbabwe, right now, it's very hard to have a figure of saying there's so many farmers there because even if there are farmers, it's kind of, uh, uh, you know, not as blown up yet. And there's not a lot of stats, like for example, we don't have an hydro, uh, hydroponics association of Zimbabwe that can provide us any of these uh, facts uh, and things like that. But I would say that, I will say that it is growing, especially in Harare over the last few years, I've seen a vast growth in people doing hydroponics, right? Uh, even people that we have trained here at uh, Fighter Grow, they're also contributing to the hydroponics uh, group in Zimbabwe, right? And then regionally, it also is kind of the same, right? Uh, because regionally, Botswana, Namibia, places like that, right? You would expect them to have quite a lot more hydroponics uh, <coughs> solutions there because of the obviously the water solutions and stuff mm -hmm. but it's also growing but globally now it's something that's been there for a while 
right? In the European countries, Western countries, it's actually being used uh, quite, uh, you know, quite a lot, right? And it started quite a long time ago. It's just that mm -hmm. it's taken time to come down here to, uh, to Africa and to Zimbabwe, right? Uh, because of the things I mentioned. But globally, it's quite a big industry and it keeps growing. Again, it's very hard to get the facts in terms, but I know it's the, in the thousands, uh, tens of thousands of people that are doing hydroponics. Uh, in the Western world, Singapore, for example, is quite another big place where mm -hmm. they are doing hydroponics a lot, Malaysia and places like that. Mm. So it's growing in a nutshell. Wow. It's interesting. One of the things as I was reading around mm. is um, hydroponics is classified within the institution of uh, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. It's quite mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could just delve a little bit onto that. Why is it classified under manufacturing? Look, uh, like I said, I think the issue is that uh, there is need for people or you know the stakeholders involved, the, the government, the ministries and stuff to sit down and actually try and formalize hydroponics a bit more. Because even if you go around to different places, uh, it's very hard classify what exactly hydroponics is okay. because there's not a lot of information about it there's not a lot of people doing it maybe or stepping up and saying look I'm doing it I want to be part of this I want to give this information right so that means that uh, in instances like you're saying it's easier maybe to put it in manufacturing because we you know we have a lot of machinery equipment and stuff so someone will be like ah this is not exactly farming where farming the soil so, so there's no soil, but there's pumps, there's pipes, mm -hmm. so let's just put it in manufacturing. So I don't really think that's uh, a fair uh, classification, but I think for what we have right now, it's just how it is. But in the future, it would be great for us hydroponics farmers to actually have our own associations, our own classifications, our own access to mm -hmm. funding, the same way uh, the soil-based farmers have access and also things like that. So I think it's a work in progress, but... Hopefully we'll get there soon. Right. So while we're talking about hydroponics, I see we have a lot of pipes that are in mm -hmm. this greenhouse. Uh, let's talk space. Okay. You said when you started off, you started in your mother's backyard mm -hmm. and we've got space that we're currently standing in a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the space. How much space are you using for this particular greenhouse? Okay, so this greenhouse, the measurements are 8 meters by 15 meters, which is 120 square meters of greenhouse use. If you can see, we've got different systems, right? We'll get into each system as we go, uh, but then we've got different systems. They look different, different orientations, right? But in here, this 120 gre uh, square meter greenhouse, we've got uh, around 3,500 heads of lettuce, right? So that means per square meter on average, we use uh, maybe 40 to 50 heads per square meter. Wow. Uh, compared to soil-based farming, where maybe you'd use, I don't know, 20 heads, depending on spacing, right? So definitely in terms of yield, uh, space and yield, right? You get around three times more yield in a hydroponics uh, setup compared to a soil-based setup. Oh, interesting. And in terms of um, the setup of the system, is something that we would want you to elaborate further on but for now let's quickly take a break and please do not go away as we are going to be delving deeper and getting our hands a little cleaner because this is not dead at all but just going to touch the water and get a few of, of what it feels like to do hydroponic farming don't go away this is industry watch 